What's up? My name is Kobe Sharp, fifth grade teacher in Michigan. Welcome to my channel. We're trying to help kids fall in love with reading. Today, we're going to be talking about 10 of the books that I read my students during the month of April. Hope you find some books to add to your to-read list and read to your students. I'll put a list down in the description of this video of the books so that you don't have to keep notes. The first one, I love this book, a brand new 2022 book, Every Dog in the Neighborhood by Matthew Cordell. It's illustrated by Matthew Cordell, written by Philip Stead. It's the story of this boy and his grandmother. The boy wants a dog and grandmother's like, nonsense, you don't need a dog. There's plenty of dogs in the neighborhood. And he's like, well, how many dogs are in the neighborhood? She's like, well, we need to find out. So he has to count all of the dogs in the neighborhood. And he like goes door to door trying to figure it out to see if there really are enough dogs or if there are not enough dogs. And all the while he's doing this, you also notice there's like this other story that's just happening in the illustrations of grandmother, the grandmother doing her due diligence to make the community a better place. It's a really beautiful book. It's fascinating. Uh, my kids loved it. And I, I am all in on this book. Really fun. Every dog in the neighborhood. Funny, amazing ending as well. Next up, this picture book biography, The Sweetest Scoop, a uh, story of Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream Revolution. I'm sure you probably had Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream, but you ever wonder how the company started? How did it begin? What was it like? Well, you should read this book. So fun. My kids really loved it. Check out the back. Check out the case. Oh my gosh. It's awesome. So, Three to Scoop, uh, definitely one of the best picture book biographies we've read this year. Brand new, kids loved it. Next up, we kicked it back old school a little bit for The Night Gardener. Uh, actually, they, these books can kind of go together. So this is by the Fan Brothers, and I read them Lizzie and the Cloud, which is the new book by the Fan Brothers, and they really loved this book. So then I read them this book, and the Fan Brothers are just amazing team of picture book creators, and the kids were, were very big fans of both. You've probably seen this, it's beautiful. I hadn't read it in a couple years. Holy smokes, what a beautiful book. So don't sleep on the night garden. And that's one of the fun things about having a new class every year is that while this book is not new to me, it's brand new to them. Just like it, the day that it came out and was exciting to all of us teachers and librarians and educators, it's new to them. And I love that they were also able to experience Lizzie. Lizzie gets a cloud for, she like buys it at like the park. She buys the cloud and carries it around. Can you, can you see her here? Where is she? She's right here. She's right here with her cloud. And like, you know, she waters her cloud, she takes care of her cloud, but then bad things happen. Clouds aren't really meant to be pets, so you should read it, it's awesome. Next up, we're gonna talk about John's Turn. This is a beautiful picture book, maybe my favorite picture book that I've read aloud this year. Holy smokes. Story of this really cool school where they have like these morning assemblies and the kids all get a chance to share during them. So they might like play their instrument, they might do magic, they might do jokes. Like if the assembly goes well, then, then they get to share. And John, you can see he is going to dance and he's pretty nervous about it. He's worried how the kids are gonna respond. He's worried about uh, how it's gonna go. And he'll walk you through that day and how he's feeling. One of the things that I love the most about this book is that it is told from the point of view of a student in the class. You don't even really, really know which student it is and to just see it through their eyes was fascinating. Um, I feel that this book, this is kind of a big statement, I feel that this book should get some Newberry buzz. That's how good I think the writing in this picture book is. I think it is that brilliant. Yeah, so we've had a handful of picture books uh, win Newberry Honors. Um, Last Up on Marcus Tree won a Newberry Medal. I think that the writing of this book belongs in that category. It's, it's, it's exquisite. So good. John's turn. Huh. How old is Mr. Tortoise? It's just so fun. This tortoise, it's his birthday. He just wants to have some cake and all of his friends just want to try to figure out how old he is. And he just like, and they're just, it's hilarious. And they just have no idea. And they're trying to figure it out. And he doesn't care. He just wants to celebrate his birthday. Really fun book, really funny book. And sometimes, some days you just need you just need a book like this and have some fun at the end of the day, celebrate books and pictures and silliness. How old is Mr. Tortoise? Really fun. Uh, next up, this is a brand new book coming out soon from Haley Rocco and John Rocco, the husband and wife team. How do you send a hug? And it's just this beautiful story of letter writing and what can happen when you send a letter and how like talking on the phone and Zooming, how it's just not the same and is personal and just how special letters can be, which I'm always trying to convince my fifth graders to write more letters. 
letting them know that if they write a letter, I will send it. Uh, so this book was a fun one. I'm definitely gonna read it early in the school year next year as I introduce letter writing and encourage kids to send letters to lots of different people. Oh, next up, man, this book, Love in the Library. Holy smokes, a story takes place during World War II. True story, um, these, these two um, people lived in those awful camps the Japanese people were put in during the war here in the United States. And one is a librarian and one likes the librarian. Uh, and it's a little, cute little story um, at a really tragic time. And it's beautiful. And I love the author's note. We read the author's note together. And you can see the actual picture of the couple. So really cool. See, kid, my kids don't understand a lot of, obviously they're little kids, so they don't understand a lot of things that happened in this country um, before they were alive. So Love and Library, beautiful, beautiful story. Next up, two books that I read during Earth Week, Earth Day Week. Um, Zonia's Rainforest, a just gorgeous book about a girl uh, and her love of where she lives in the rainforest and just all the different things that she sees during the day and the, from the plants to the creatures and her love for it. And then she comes to this point where everything stops when she sees like a portion of it that has been cut down. It's a pretty powerful page turn. And um, I don't think kids often think about the rainforest being cut down and why. And I think this is a beautiful introduction to those really, just the really sad things that are happening on this planet. And then One Little Bag, I read this book every year on Earth Day. I say every year, it's only been out a few years. Uh, but it's a story of this bag it starts in the forest. And you can, I'll show it to you. It starts like before the title page, you see the tree. The tree gets cut down and it gets hauled to like the place where the paper mill, where they make paper. And it gets turned to a bag and then this kid buys a bag and then it's like, he tries to keep using it. It's really cool. Author's note is awesome because Henry Cole kind of did a similar thing with a paper bag when he was growing up. So those are, that's it. Those are the books. Holy smokes, some really awesome books. Those are the 10 picture books I read in April. Let me know what you're reading. Let me know if any of these uh, sound good to you down in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Colby Sharp. I hope you have an awesome, fantastic day.